today I'm making a PCB on my Shapeoko CNC machine. This is going to be a 5 volt and 10 volt DC DC converter for one of the projects I'm working on. I'm just using a single sided PCB from Amazon, aligning it to the edge of my wasteboard, and held it down with double sided tape. I'm using a 132nd end mill, also from Amazon, and this is used specifically for making PCBs. I'm using Carbide Create to do the layout for the PCB. There's a few free online tools for PCB layout. One of my favorites is Easy EDA and JLC PCB. But for a quick turnaround, I can crank out a PCB using Carbide Create in about an hour. For most of the devices I'm using, the pins require a 0.9 millimeter hole. So here I've laid out a few holes, just copy and pasting them. And I have my grid spacing set to 2.54 millimeters to match the pitch of the devices that I'm using. And I'm just drawing my traces using rectangles and I'm gonna union these to make them all one object. And now I'm gonna add an offset to this object of 0.4 millimeters. That's going to be the thickness of the trace surrounding the hole. So that would be the solder pad. And that's the thickest I can go because my pitch is 2.5 millimeters. The diameter of my end mill is 0.8. The hole is 0.9. So that leaves 0.8 millimeters left for the thickness of the trace. So here I have my trace and the area around the trace that I'm going to cut. And I'm just pasting the holes back in. To subtract the area that we're going to cut from the background plating of the PCB, we first click the background and then click the part we want to subtract and click the subtract tool. And now we can go into the toolpath tab of Carbide Create and define where we want the end mill to actually trace. And I'm selecting the 132nd end mill and I'm going to select the outside edge of our trace. And you can see the blue line shows the path that the CNC is going to take. If you want to round off these square edges, there's a really quick trick to do that. I'm going to create a one millimeter inside offset. And then I'm going to take that offset and add a one millimeter outside offset. And that creates a one millimeter radius on all the outside edges. So this is the first time I've made a PCB on my Shapeoko, and the first time wasn't really successful. I kept my dust boot on, which meant I had to keep my bit extended really far, and as you can see in this video, it's pretty wobbly, and so the traces were cut much wider than they were supposed to be, and the holes were much larger. So I didn't end up with any solder pad around any of my holes. Here you can see the width of the end mill and the actual width of the trace and you can see how much it's wobbling inside my router. So I ditched the dust boot and shoved the end mill as far into the spindle as it would go and you can see the wobbling went away. And here we're cutting the traces. You can see the first pass is just skimming the top of the copper and by the second pass it looks like all the copper is removed. The PCB wasn't exactly level so I did have to go back and fix the back right corner and just go slightly deeper to make sure all the copper was removed. So this is the rework going on right there. And you can see the results are way better than the first time. The solder pads around the holes are pretty much non-existent previously and now I have my full 0.4 millimeters around the hole. So here's the completed board. I'm going to start assembling all the components. This is a pretty simple PCB. These are just three pin regulators. The left pin is input voltage, the middle pin is ground, and the right pin is output voltage. One of these regulators is for 10 volts and the other is for 5 volts. And I'm using a JST connector with a 0.1 inch pitch, but I also have holes drilled for a standard Tyco connector which is 5 to 5.08 millimeters. I slotted some of the holes so that it could take either. Here I'm just soldering the pins and I'll come back and clip the leads so that they're not sticking out the bottom. The 5 and the 10 indicate the voltage for each. And here I'm installing the JST housing 
it's keyed to make sure that the harness can't be plugged in backwards. And these green plastic bits are DIN rail clips so that my circuit board can clip on a DIN rail. And it just clips on with a little snap. So time to plug it in, power it up, and see if it works. I have uh, 24 volts feeding into it. And this should measure 10 volts out. And this should measure 5 volts out. And it looks like it's working. So there it is. My first uh, PCB done on a Shea Poco. I have some extra holes there on the leading edge on the front to add some resistors for voltage divider or pull-up resistors or I could add LEDs or capacitors and I also have a set of five holes where the JST connector is to add a Molex connector on a five millimeter pitch. It took me about an hour to draw and an hour to machine so a two-hour turnaround time sure beats a five-day turnaround time. All the parts were about eight dollars to build two DC-DC converters so it's a pretty cost-effective way. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.